Hello and welcome to the solution video for spicy question number 33. For this question we're going to need some coordinate axes and we're going to look at this curve first of all which has equation y equals ax squared plus bx plus c. Now we're told the roots of the equation ax squared plus bx plus c equals 0 are x equals 6 and x equals 10. Now notice how the form of this equation exactly matches the form of the curve. This means that the curve must cross the x-axis at the two points x equals 6 and x equals 10. So let's mark those onto the diagram. We're then told the turning point of the graph has coordinates k negative 12. Since quadratic graphs are symmetrical, the turning point's x-coordinate will always be halfway in between the roots. The roots we've got here are 6 and 10, so halfway in between those is 8. So the value of k will be 8, and the turning point will have coordinates 8, negative 12, which is here. We can now sketch on a quadratic curve that goes through all of those points like this, but we still don't know the equation of this curve yet. We know its roots are 6 and 10, so if we factorise that it must be of the form x minus 6, x minus 10. But there are many different quadratic graphs that have that form. In fact, we could multiply x minus 6, x minus 10 by any number, and it would still have the same two roots. So we're going to write our graph in this form, y equals n, which is some number we need to find, times x minus 6, x minus 10. Because this graph will always have the roots 6 and 10. If we now expand out the double brackets, we end up with y equals n lots of x squared take away 16x plus 60. Next I'm going to complete the square on what's inside the square brackets there. The coefficient of x is negative 16, so I'm going to half that to get negative 8. So we do y equals n lots of, then inside the bracket, x minus 8 all squared. This will give me a positive 64, so I'll take that away, and then plus 60 which simplifies to give you y equals n lots of x minus 8 squared, take away 4. You can multiply through by this n now, so you get n lots of x minus 8 squared, take away 4n. Now this is the completed square form for all quadratic graphs that have the roots 6 and 10. Now if we look at our graph, we can see that the turning point has coordinates 8, negative 12. If we then look at the equation, the equation here has vertex 8, negative 4n. So if we compare this 4n here to 12, we find that if 4n equals 12, n equals 3. This gives us the n that we need to form the equation of the curve c. So if we write the equation out again, but replace the n with a 3, and then expand this out, you find that y equals 3x squared take away 48x plus 180. So that's the equation of the curve c. Now let's move on to the next part of the question. It says the line L1 has equation y equals negative 3x plus 18 and L1 is going to intersect the curve at two points, and we need to find their coordinates. So if we take L1, which has this equation, and we've also got the curve, we need to solve them simultaneously. Since they're both in the form y equals, we can write 3x squared minus 48x plus 180 equals negative 3x plus 18. If you add 3x and take 18 from both sides, you end up with 3x squared, take away 45x, plus 162 equals 0. There's a common factor of 3 here, so we can divide through by 3 to get x squared minus 15x plus 54 equals 0. This will factorise nicely, it gives x minus 6, x minus 9 equals 0, which gives you two x values of x equals 6 and x equals 9. Now since it's coordinates, we also want the y coordinate, so we'll substitute those back in. If you do so, you'll end up with y equals 0 when x was 6, and if x is 9, you get y equals negative 9. This leads us to two coordinates where these graphs intersect. We've got 6, 0, and also 9, negative 9. Now in the question, it tells us that x1 is less than x2. This means the x-coordinate of the point P is lower than the x-coordinate of the point Q. So point P must be the one with the smaller x-coordinate, so P must be 6, 0, and Q must be 9, negative 9. So we can mark those onto the diagram. Now 6, 0 is already marked, it was one of our roots, so we can call that P. But point Q is a new point, let's mark that on, that's at 9, negative 9. And if we join these up, we get the line L1. We can now move on in the question. The line L2 is perpendicular to L1, but also goes through the point P. If two lines are perpendicular, then their gradients are negative reciprocals. The gradient of the line L1 is negative 3, so the gradient of the line L2 must be positive 1 third. So it's of the form y equals 1 third x plus c where c is the y-intercept that we need to find. We can find the y-intercept by substituting in the values of a point on the line. Let's make it easy and just go for the point p, which has coordinate 6, 0, 
So if we substitute those in, we end up with 0 equals 1 third of 6 plus c. 1 third of 6 is obviously 2, so we end up with c equals negative 2. So the equation of the line L2 is y equals 1 third x, take away 2. We can plot this onto our diagram as well, it goes like this. Now the next piece of information we're told is about the line L3. This goes through the point Q and intersects L2 at the point R. Now we have the point Q already, we can see that on the diagram, but we don't have the point R. All we know is it's going to be somewhere on the line L2, which is the purple line on the diagram. We're also told that the area of triangle PQR is 60 square units. You can find the area of any triangle by doing 1 half times the base times the perpendicular height. Now since the lines L1 and L2 are perpendicular, it makes sense to use those as our base and height. Since we don't know where the point R is, let's start with the line from P to Q. We can work out the length of this line using Pythagoras. So PQ squared would equal 3 squared plus 9 squared, which of course equals 90. So PQ will be square root 90. We can add that to the diagram. Now this is useful because it's one of the lengths of the triangle, we need a length that goes perpendicular to this, which will be PR, unfortunately though we don't know where R goes. We do know though the area of the triangle, which is 60 units squared. So 1 half times the base, which we could say is PQ, which is square root 90, times the perpendicular height, which will be PR, we just don't know how long that is, must equal 60. If you times both sides by 2, the half will cancel, so you'll get square root 90 PR equals 120. And then if you divide both sides by square root 90, you'll find that PR is 120 divided by square root 90. We can simplify square root 90, that's the same as square root 9 square root 10, which is the same as 3 root 10. And the 120 and the 3 will cancel to give 40, so you end up with 40 over root 10. We can also rationalise the denominator here, so if we multiply by root 10 over root 10, you get 40 root 10 over 10. And the 40 and the 10 will cancel to give 4, so PR is 4 root 10. So even though we don't know where the point R is yet, we know the length from P to R must be 4 root 10. Now earlier on we found the equation of the purple line L2. It was y equals 1 third x take away 2. So it has a gradient of 1 third. So if we drew a line from P to R, even though we don't know where this point R is yet, the distance between those two points needs to be 4 root 10. Now since the gradient of this line is 1 third, if we draw on a gradient triangle like this, and then called the vertical distance k, then the horizontal distance must be 3k, so that the gradient is 1 third. We can use Pythagoras on this again, it's a right angled triangle, so k squared plus 9k squared equals 4 root 10 squared. On the left hand side you've just got 10k squared. If you square the right hand side you do 4 squared, which is 16, and then square root 10 squared, which is just 10, and 16 times 10 is 160. Divide both sides by 10 and you'll get k squared equals 16, and then square root both sides and you'll get k equals plus or minus 4. Now of course since we're talking about a length here it can't be negative so we're just going to go with k equals 4. So let's replace k with 4 on our diagram, and also 3k with 3 lots of 4 which is 12. This means the horizontal distance from p to r is 12, and the vertical distance from p to r is 4. Since we know the coordinates of p are 6, 0, we can work out the coordinates of r by going right 12 and up 4, which would take you to this point here, 18, 4. We're now ready to attempt the last part of the question, we need to find the equation of the line L3. Remember L3 goes between Q and R, so we can draw it onto the diagram here. To find the equation of this line we just need a gradient and an intercept. Let's do the gradient first by drawing a gradient triangle. The horizontal distance here is 9 and the vertical distance is 13, so the gradient must be 13 over 9. So it's y equals 13 over 9x, plus some value c. To find c I'm going to pick one of the points on the line and substitute in those values. It makes sense to use r since those values are positive, so let's replace y with 4 equals 13 over 9 lots of the x coordinate which is 18 plus c. On the left hand side we'll leave that as 4, but on the right hand side the 18 and the 9 will cancel to give you 2, and then times that by 13 is 26 plus c. This will give you a c value of negative 22, so the equation of the line L3 is y equals 13 over 9x, take away 22. And that's the answer to your question. Thank you for watching this video, I hope you found it useful. Check out the one I think you should watch next and subscribe, so you don't miss out on future videos.